All right, welcome everyone to my shop. I wanted to show you a sled that I made for resawing logs on my my bandsaw. Um, saw a lot of videos online, watched a lot of guys and how they made bandsaw sleds for doing this type of work. And uh, there's only a couple guys out there that I saw that did it the way um, that this is done. Everybody else is uh, drilling or screwing the log to the sled and filling your you know your your log full of holes and mounting it to the sled I, I didn't like that at all um, so this is the way that I came up with it basically um, on the bottom it's just three quarter inch plywood for the for the base of it and for the rail system just basically I put um, I put some some track on the bottom there and my craftsman bandsaw has got not just a slot but it's like a T-slot, and that's where this comes into play, where it grabs the bottom of that T. I could show you on the other side here, if I can get a good picture of it. Well, maybe not, but... So that T-slot allows me to um, pull this sled way out before... And it's still grabbing on there, so it won't fall out of the... And it gives me some stability while I mount a log in there before I start cutting. Um, so basically that's the, the the rail system that I have on the bottom there. So basically just three quarter inch plywood for the sled. Then I built the carriage that holds the log. Uh, basically just a just a box system that slides on my two rails there. And those are tightened and adjusted with my with my nuts and nuts and bolts here. And that allows the whole you know the whole sled to um, tilt and slide and mount the log wherever you want it then i mounted a uh, bar clamp to it and the log fits in between the bar clamp so you're not screwing any logs to the sled or anything like that basically just putting it in the bar clamp mounting it on there and then uh, tightening up your bar clamp and that holds the log securely and i have a drill a lot of holes in the in this backer board where you can move this whole assembly up or down or in or out um, for adjustability wherever you want it to be um, sometimes that's kind of a pain, um, but it works, and uh, and it is secure to do that. All you got to do is just take out the two, um, the two bolts here. You know, pull them out, move it around to wherever you want it, and uh, and then put them back in. Um, I had to make some uh, blocks of wood here to keep that um, bar clamp away from the back edge of this because otherwise it would interfere with. Uh, the bar clamp parts back in here. So they're spaced out a little bit here. Um, and maybe later on in the video I'll show you the how I got my uh, my nuts mounted inside the rail system here um, of that. So I don't even know if I could zoom way in there. It's probably not going to come out real good. But uh, I'll show you that in a little in a little bit. So let me continue to walk through this. So basically you mount your log on there. And you bring it into the blade wherever you want it. Tighten the whole system down. Tighten the log down. If you have a gap underneath the log, you can put wedges or shims so that the, the log doesn't roll as you're um, trying to cut it. That's dangerous, and it will it'll destroy your blade and maybe damage your saw doing that. So you always want to have it supported as close you can to the blade. Um, so I do that. Sometimes I'll just put shims or whatever I find that works. Um, so once the logs mounted in there, you basically just run the whole um, the whole system uh, through the through the saw. And uh, once I get uh, one side, then I can put that flattened side on this and mount it again, you know, in your bar clamp, and then take a, another one. And then you can get rid of this and just use your um, your fence for your bandsaw, or you can keep milling with this. Sometimes, um, if you want to keep milling with this and you want to uh, uh, do consistent cuts. What I've done is, after I do my cut, I'll mount this board up against my um, my base. I guess we'd call it, you know, this part of the jig here. I mount this board and I tighten it. Okay, so now I have a fixed point of reference. And then I can take this sled and move it um, whatever amount that I do. Sometimes if I'm doing pen blanks, I'll just stuff a couple pen blanks in here. Um, as spacers like that and then bring my carriage up against that 
So now I know it's three quarters of an inch. No matter what the log looks like, it's going to cut three quarters of an inch. And then I tighten my carriage down, right? Run your log through there, okay? Pull my blanks out. And then move this marking gauge against my, my carriage. Tighten it down, make my cut, do the same thing. Uh, and then, you know, move your uh, carriage again, the three quarters of an inch, put your spacers in there, and then you can just keep going and continue to make consistent cuts. But that's what this piece of wood is for. It's, it's a uh, fixed point of reference that I can use. Um, rather than put measuring tape or something here, I wanted something more accurate because a lot of times maybe your, you know, your sled is kittywampus or it's not parallel to the blade, which is fine as long as you're, you're consistent log cuts. Um, that you're getting but give me a second here. Let's see if I can pause this thing and show you how it works Okay, so basically we're gonna take this log here. We're gonna set it in In our jig it's a nice thing about this. It's not gonna fall off the table because it's gripped underneath there Like I said before right now. I don't have these tight. That's fine Bring our clamps in we'll tighten this down just to and then tighten this, loosen this up a little bit, bring it back one, almost got a click. Alright, no, that's alright. Oh. We just jam it in there. Okay. And then I just take a look at it, see how it's mounted in there. Working in my shop with a camera is no fun. Um, so again, it's just mounted in that bar clamp. Um, underneath it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of space there, but I think we'll be all right. We're just going to take a small, um, small sliver off this thing and see if we can't get a good, good edge on this. Let's try that. So basically. Gonna eye it down, see what that looks like. I don't need much. Try something like something like that. Tighten my carriage down to the sled on the bottom. Make sure everything's tight. This thing's solid as sears. Here we go. one edge right there and now with that fixed point of reference we can take this off and we'll get another lay it on the table so now it's stable mount it in here then take another guesstimate here tighten it down and again a lot of guys were drilling Drilling holes into the log, drilling screws into the log from the, the carriage and, you know, all kinds of stuff. I didn't see the point of that. Well, now your wood that you're milling up has got all kinds of holes in it. But this thing's mounted um, quite flat to the table.
does a pretty nice cut. So, now I can start slabbing it up. Now that I have this set, all I got to do is loosen up my carriage um, if I really wanted to and start walking it, you know, whatever distance that I wanted to um, by going onto this side, you know, loosening everything up and then using this as my, uh, my fixed point of reference. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you, you got something out of it. And if you're looking to make one of these, um, let me know how it goes. Um, somebody out there did this instead of using a uh, the bar clamp they used a pipe clamp um, I don't know this is working so far uh, I'm not real happy with it it's a, uh, a harbor freight type clamp it's a little I don't know it's a little weak but it's working um, and you can put logs in there I don't know I'm saying 24 inches if you really wanted to get crazy I don't know how far out my carriage would go though before I got a it falls off the table. I could probably measure that while we're standing here. Let's try that. Um, let me turn this, see how far this carriage would go, and then take a measurement. See, so I'm going to be sitting probably, I already lost it. I would have to get a, a longer, see, I'm getting kind of weak right there. I wouldn't probably for myself want to go much more than that. That's 24 inches. Um, so that gives me a 24 inch log. I could probably safely put in this thing um, if I extended uh, My runner at the bottom further out You know then I can go further out. So that's something I may want to think about in the future um, I just like the fact that um, It holds it That type of rail system that I got holds it. Let me put my camera on pause and find another chunk of that railing and I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about so here's another uh, chunk of that um, that rail that I have. You know, again, it just fits in the in the slot here, and it's got that that disc at the bottom that extends out further than the rail, and it it grips. Boy, what a terrible camera this thing has got! But it, it's further out, so it won't you know pop out of there. But this piece here, it's, what is this, an 18-incher or something? If I got longer ones of these, boy, I guess my options are unlimited as far as how big of a log you can really be cutting. Yeah, so this is an 18-inch um, 18 inch bar here. So if they sold a 24-inch or 36-inch, I mean, you can, go, you can go crazy with it if you really wanted to. But um, that's how I'm milling logs up out here. And uh, I hope that uh, you're able to... To get something out of that. Oh, again, I'll pop the camera off of my tripod here and we'll walk through this thing real quick again. So, um, basically, it's just that bar clamp that sits in there. Um, I have it sitting out further um, than the backing plate here just so I can slide um, this thing, you know, back and forth. Again, if I had to do shorter logs and more stability, I could um, pull those out and move the clamp or longer logs. I mean, I guess you're you're really the the design here. Um, if you follow this design, you can go bigger. If you want to, just make the sled and everything bigger. Um, so that's that, and uh, maybe I'll I'll put it on pause. I'll pull a log off this thing, throw it on my table saw, and maybe I'll just walk through the the construction of this thing and show you how I mounted the bolts and everything inside the bar clamp. Give me a second. All right, so it's on the table saw here, and let me show you what I got going on here. Again, the bar clamp's just mounted in there with two um, quarter-inch bolts. You'll see them sticking out. I don't think they have to be this long, um, but that's how the, the bar clamp's mounted. These two are mounted so this carriage can go onto the sled through these T-slots here. I think they're just, I don't know if they're toilet bolts or whatever um, on the bottom there. Pull them apart. Right. No, oh, they're just regular bolts. You know what I mean? So just regular quarter inch hex head bolts. Fit in the slot like that. Um, and again, this is my fixed point of reference board here. Again, just sits in the in the slot there. And then the bar clamp.
show you how I did that with the Harbor Freight 36 inch bar clamp. Again, there uh, spacer spacer boards there, but I found some. Let's see where I got this stuff. So this pull that board off. Yeah, I found some aluminum channel. I don't know. Well, that's just regular T slot that I had somewhere. Oh, here's another. I got a whole chunk of it. So basically, it's just uh, some T slot. Um, I cut a couple pieces of it a few inches long, and it fits um, right inside the channel of the bar clamp, the Harbor Freight bar clamp. Let's see if we can get a good picture of that while it's in there. So it just fits. Not easy with one hand, but you get the gist. Give me a second here while the camera's all kitty wampus. So it just fits within the bar clamp. And slides down in there. I think I sanded it a little bit, but it's just almost a perfect fit right in the Harbor Freight, you know, bar clamp. Just like that, two pieces and the whole clamping system slides right in there. It locks it in really good. It's, it feels really solid. Um, so again, if you wanted to do this, you're going to need some some T-slot like that, you know, both for the, for the carriage or for the sled and then... Uh, you know, a couple pieces for in there. Go with the Harbor Freight uh, bar clamp, and uh, basically just build your sled. There's nothing really, nothing really crazy about it. Those are the only pieces you really need, and the the bottom railing system. However, your uh, table saw or uh, bandsaw is designed seven eighths, three quarter, whatever um, bottom that is. But it didn't cost me much to do, and it's stable, and I'm able to mill up some good logs. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you later.